Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and this video is for Charles. Charles, I'm sending you some peach pits, and you're going to be able to use these peach pits uh, to grow your own peach trees. Several years ago, I grew some peach trees at my previous homestead, and I found out to my surprise that the peach pits I was getting from those uh, trees were actually viable, and I was able to continue growing them. So I have very generously offered to send you some of my peach pits, and I figured I was going to box them up along with a few surprises. So whether you're Charles or not Charles, you might be interested in watching this video. Okay, so Charles, I have three different types of peach seeds that I'm gonna be sending to you. I have this set here where I've got how many? Seven, I think. I've got seven of these dirty, dusty peach pits and these are the ones that have a high degree of likelihood of sprouting these are from my original peach trees that i grew at my original homestead i've had a lot of success re uh, growing these and the offspring of these peaches uh, have continued to give more peaches so i'm going to be taking this seven uh, these seven peach pits and i'm going to throw them into your box there on top of that, I'm going to be adding two extra peach pits. These are much larger. I'm going to show a little size comparison here. These are much larger peach pits. And these are for a red fleshed peach pit. I think it's called like a crimson rocket peach. And this is a new tree that I have at my current homestead. I don't know whether these are viable, but I've got a couple of them. I'm going to try them here and I'm going to give you a couple so you can try them as well. So these are the larger uh, kind of almond shaped uh, peach pits. You know, I, I would have put these in individual bags and labeled them, but um, I think we all know I'm too lazy to do that. So they're going in there as well. I've got one more set of peach pits, and these are on the small side. Uh, these are the original pits from my original homestead, and these are the smaller pits that are from another peach tree that I've been growing here at the new homestead. This is a white fleshed peach tree, and it gives much smaller uh seeds and they're kind of they're less of an almond shape and they're more more round i'm giving you four of those and they're all just scrambled together i'm partially doing this video so you can refer back to it later and know which one's which although does it really matter you just plant them all and see what grows right so i'm sending those all out your way and uh you know i don't necessarily expect a hundred percent germination rate but you know hopefully a lot of that grows for you for me personally what i do to get these things to grow is i definitely don't bring them into the house and care for them and treat them nicely. Whenever I've done that in the past, they never even germinate. The best thing in my experience for getting peach pits to uh, uh, germinate is to kind of just throw them outside on the ground and let them overwinter and get frozen and thawed and just kind of abuse them. Uh, that makes it a little difficult to find them sometimes. So you want to put them in a very specific area uh, where you can kind of keep an eye out looking for like sprouting going on. And you'll see like the little peach leaves uh, coming off and they, they have kind of like a not a woody stem, but a more uh, ri uh, rugged stem than like any kind of general weed that you'd find. So I would just put them out somewhere in some kind of a patch, you know, maybe put some sticks near there and just see what comes up uh, next season. But I'd throw them out and just let them sit there all winter because that seems to be what peaches like. They, they want to be abused. All right, uh, that's not all I'm sending you. I'm also, because, you know, I'm going to send something. I may as well, you know, fill up the box. I'm going to send you a copy of Bug Out, which I will be, I'll be autographing it for you. Uh, of what little value that is. Um, I guess I'll have to, I'm gonna have to unwrap it in order to autograph it, because otherwise I would just be autographing the, uh, the plastic uh, wrapping there. I don't have a pen in front of me, so I'll have to do that off camera later on, but that's gonna go in there. And the other thing is a particularly attractive feather from our rooster, Coco, who's got these iridescent black feathers. I'm gonna give you one of those and send it off to you on Monday, the 14th of October, because I have to go to the post office that day anyway. So that's it. I hope you found this interesting. And I've got one extra surprise if you waited this long, which is someone sent me something and I'm gonna open it up. And they sent it several years ago and I've been meaning to do a video for a long time on it and I've just been kind of too busy to do it. And I figure I'll open it up right now. This was from a uh, subscriber who uh, was kind of active on my channel for a while. I haven't heard from her in a while. I'm gonna try to track you down and send you this video, uh, but I'm finally opening this up. It smells like there's soap in here and it's labeled uh, 
Regina's Regalia Soaps. Ritual Soaps. Ritual Regina's Regalia Soaps. Not sure what order I'm supposed to read that in, but that's the, the her kind of company labeling. So I'm going into it with my Piccolo Haas knife. I just did a review on really awesome kitchen knives. If you want your forever kitchen knife set, I would highly recommend that. Here's a video uh, link to the video review on those. I was looking forever for just some high quality knives and uh, I finally found them. Actually, they found me is the way that it worked out. I did a review on garbagey knives of mine that broke and this company contacted me and said, hey, I bet you'll like ours better. And I do. All right, so what's in here? So, there's a lot in here. Okay. Thank you very much for sending this, by the way. I'm sorry it took me so long to, to do the video. All right, so there is a, uh, a card here with a... I'm just going to read, the, uh, read the, the card here. It says, Dear Praxis and Family, thank you for your selfless gifts you give the prepper community. You don't always get to see the ripple of what you do helping people. Please accept these humble gifts in gratitude from me for all you do. Merry Solstice. I, and I'm feeling really bad that I've, I've forgotten your screen name at this point. I'm, I'm going to track you down and uh, let you know that I finally uh, got into this. Um, so, well, th these are obviously a bunch of soaps and I guess I'll open them, open them up. That one's got a nice sticker on it. Let's see. I always think that, yeah, I'll see these kind of soaps at uh, stores, and oftentimes they look so delicious you want to eat them. <laughs> they look like candy. There's just some different cool soaps. And it's like pomegranate and hibiscus, apple hard cider scent. Let's see what else. That's not soap. This one's soap, though. Soap making is such a neat, a neat craft. Especially when you make this, oh uh, yeah, see they, these are beautiful. They've got the, uh, like all these swirls on the top. Oh, no kidding. It's, it's a Praxis Prepper brand itself. That's, that's really kind of neat. This is called the Praxis Prepper. I guess, I guess this is what I look like in soap form here. And it's got kind of like a, I, I can't describe the smell of anything. It smells like soap. But uh, it's got kind of like a dark top covering on it. And, uh, oh, oh, wow, okay. The rare progressive homesteader. Are you a tree hugger, maybe even a soy boy? If prepping has got you down, uh, let this lift you up. Made with only the freshest apocalypse garden ingredients. Wow, that's so clever. I wish I'd opened this up years ago. I, it was just a situation where I didn't want to just open it up and not do a whole video on it, but I'm always just so busy. I'm kind of like, ah, oh, next week, next week, next week. And it's like been years. And let's see what's in these guys. Thank you so much. It's very generous of you to send this stuff over. All right. Give me something in here. What is... Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. It's some sort of like uh, jewelry, which I can't say I'm necessarily going to be... <laughs> I'll, fi I'll find a use in some video for this. But it's got a really cool... I don't even know what that is. It's some kind of like human-made gem and some kind of a resin with lichen. It looks almost like gold foil in there. I mean, that's really cool looking. Wow. There was a lot of effort put into this. I, I, I knew that there was some soap in there, but I didn't know there was all this other stuff. And there's a, uh, ooh, like kind of like a resin, a resin bird skull. I'm going to open this up. I wasn't, I, I was thinking it was just going to be some soap, not just soap, but I was thinking it was only soap in there. Well, that's kind of cool too. I wonder how that was made. Some kind of a mold created. It's like, it's like a crow's skull filled with uh, natural materials. That's really cool. So thank you very much for this. It's a, it, there's a two-way street here. Gifts coming in, gifts going out. Awesome. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you very much for the gifts. Regina, I guess, uh, was, was the name. I, I forget what your screen name was. It's been such a long time that, that you, you haven't been uh, active on here. But uh, I will try to reach out to you. Hopefully, I am able to reach out to you. And thank you for all of this, uh, these cool gifts. And Charles, uh, let me know when your gifts arrive. That's it. Sounds like the kettle is about to boil over. So I get it going. Thanks for watching. Hey. Can I see that skull? Yeah. It's right there.
Can I hold? Yeah, sure, sure. Check it out. Ooh, it's so cool. Yeah, and look at look at that amulet thing there. So it's like a, it's like a resin bird skull filled with natural. Yeah, it's like lichen and things. What what is this? I don't know, it's like an amulet. It's so cool. Yeah, I gotta get that tea kettle. You still want your tea? Yeah. It's so cool. And the soap smells like soap. Yeah, this is the Praxis Pepper soap. Can I see? Yeah, check it out. Uh, okay. Now, obviously, this water was just boiling, so it's going to be hot. What? Well, why? What's the shape on the top? Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of the, the natural shape of the. Uh, uh, oh, it smells so. Yeah. So much. The the Praxis Prepper brand. <laughs> it's kind of neat. All right, I'm gonna put your uh, tea in. It's cold, so cool. Do you want it? Yeah. Okay. Just take care of it. Mm-hmm. I'll put in my backpacker. Yeah. Like yeah. in like one of the special pockets. Yeah, it's really nice. I wonder how they got the bird skull. Well, I don't think it looks like a, a mold must have been created because it's all resin. Yeah, I know. But how do they get the stuff from the inside? Well, uh, may, I imagine maybe it's like a silicone mold or something like that. And then uh, when it's done, they peel uh, like they. Yeah, and then it opens up. up. And then and then it goes back to its original shape. Is that pomegranate? Yeah, I think pomegranate is what it's good in. Oh, cider. Okay. Yeah. Does it have gold in it? Gilded soap? If that's real gold, you might want to get that out. <laughs> yeah. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.